With the new Fallout show releasing, everyone is going back and revisiting the games, and I'm no different. The show was great, and really got me in the mood to platinum the Fallout games I'm missing. With Fallout 3 and New Vegas already done, first up was one I'd only really ever played a couple of hours of on PC, and that's Fallout 4. For all 51 trophies, I'd have to complete missions with all four of the factions, Minutemen, Brotherhood of Steel, Railroad and Institute, so sit back, relax and join me on Fallout 4's Platinum Journey. Beginning the game, I created my character, entered the vault to avoid the blast, and then had to leave because, well, things went sideways. I found a gun, killed a few rad roaches, found a pit boy, opened the vault door and left, entering the wasteland. Real life- Ooh! War never changes! Venturing on, I arrived at the Red Rocket. I'll be spending a lot of time here later on, but for now, I found my new best friend, Dogmeat, who I pretty much had followed me the whole game. Not long after, met with Preston Garvey, went up to the roof and climbed inside some power armor, took on a whole bunch of raiders and a death claw with a sweet minigun. Y'all might want to run though. Bitch! Ooh! Easy, bro. Where you going? Oh, yeah, boy. You can go away, mate. Yo, check that out, boys. I took that out myself, man. Ooh. No one's impressed. Okay. Bro, he's... Man down. Man down. He's stuck. No, we're good, we're good, good. False alarm. False alarm. Let's go. Let's continue. You could walk a little bit faster, though, fellas. You know what I mean? Like, I ain't got all day. Next, I had to escort Gavi and the group to Sanctuary, our new main base which is where my character lived before the bombs went off. After a long, long, slow walk, we arrived. I'd be glad to test it. When freedom calls. With the group now safe, I headed out with dog meat and stumbled on some guy who needed our help, but I wanted some extra caps for the job. So I haggled the price. And in Fallout, if you say certain things, you gain experience points if you actually pass. It'll be like a yellow colour, orange or red. If you do pass, you get a nice experience buff from it. I successfully got more caps and reached level 5. Not gonna make it. Oh, we got another level! Born Survivor. Moving forward, I was travelling at night, got jumped by some ghouls and continued to Diamond Seer when this happened. Jesus. What's that? Sound? What the hell just happened, bro? Touchdown. Get a touchdown. I don't even know what that means. I'm guessing it means I get blown the hell up. Holy sh Someone just nuked me, bro. <laughs> what the hell was that? Oh my days. I'm not going there again, bro. Holy shit. Some days are harder than others. But even the hard days get easier than the one before. Yeah, tell me about it, bro. I've just been blown up. After feeling defeated, Preston wanted me to head over to a facility and clear out the raiders, which would allow me to then join and lead the Minutemen. When this happened... Right, hold up, hold up. No, stop shooting me. Right, we killed all the raiders. Now I'm going to slowly take this thing out. There's another one. Oh, you can't even hit me from there. Keep up. We're not even going to talk about it. <laughs> There's no way that just happened, bro. Yeah, things really weren't going so well for me at this point. But I got my revenge, trekked back to Sanctuary, and let Preston know that the job was done. Why not? The first Good. step. Welcome up. Join the Minutemen. Now as the new leader of the Minutemen, I faced my fears and headed back out to Diamond City to continue my search for my son, Sean. This time, taking a different route, because we don't want that happening again. Once I'd arrived, I met a new character called Piper. After making my way inside with Piper, I reached level 10. Does that mean I'd... Ooh, we got ourselves another trophy. Commonwealth Citizen. Back on the search for Sean, I was clued in about a detective that could help me, but he'd gone missing. Turns out he was in some trouble with some gangsters and they had taken him hostage. It was my job to go and get him, so... I did, and after taking them all out, Detective Valentine was safe and willing to help. Unlikely Valentine. Before heading out in search of Sean, I went back to the sanctuary and helped make them feel a little bit more at home. So I cleaned the place up a little bit, planted some crops, 
build some defenses and place some beds. Take care now. Nice. Oh, trophy as well. Sanctuary. Oh my god, that scared the shit out of me, bro. Holy shit. I was looking right at it and I didn't even see it. I then continued expanding for the Minutemen and one of the places was a castle. After clearing it out, I had to power it up to set up a radio tower to bring in new settlers. Because what is a settlement without people? Trophy taking independence. With the Minutemen radio being broadcasted, we started to get settlers in need of help. One of them was being hassled by this huge area filled with super mutants. And if I would take them all out, they were willing to join the Minutemen. So I, of course, cleared them all out, killed them all. And after I did, I went back to the settlement, giving them the good news, which meant I now had three settlements. Oh, that is great news. Stella, you have our oh, gratitude. community and organizer. Next, I gathered 1,000 resources that you use for crafting. Almost everything in this game can be used in some way, shape, or form. Ooh, scaver. Continued helping the Minutemen. I ended up in a factory with a rogue dude in some power armor who had taken some people hostage. My job was to end him. Shit. And Ronnie Shaw returns. She's something else. Old guns. This next trophy I failed to record because I'm an idiot. It was for crafting 100 items called Wasteland DIY. For some reason, cooking food also counted, so I'm not complaining, but uh, I guess that's why I missed it. I just wasn't expecting this one. Not much longer after that, I lock picked my 50th lock. This came super fast. That's it. What's yours is mine. And two seconds later, got stuck. Stuck. Now back on the hunt for Sean, I got a little information on a guy called Kellogg. But for some reason I just think of cereal when I think of that guy. Either way, I knew the guy's location, so once I arrived, I tried to talk him out of it, but he wasn't having any of it. He would not come alive. So I ended him and took his brain augmentator that would allow me to relive his memories. Oh, popped his head off. Terminal password. Cybernetic brain augment. Sure, I'll take that. I'll take his pistol as well. Oh, look at that. Reunions. Getting inside his mind, we found out the Institute was involved, which I kind of guessed that would be the case. We relived the moment he killed my wife and took Sean. A few years had passed and Sean was a little bit older and then taken to the Institute. Dangerous Mines, and a level up as well. I then managed to miss another trophy. I must have been so immersed in the game or something that I just forgot to press to save the replay and the gameplay. Either way, excuses aside, the trophy was called Animal Control for killing 300 creatures. I'd love to say I didn't miss any more, but I did. I missed one more after this. I then engaged in some combat with the Enclave. I think these are new missions that were included in the PS5 version and I guess like the update to the PS4 version of Fallout 4 and these guys were no joke. I'd imagine you're supposed to do these like towards the end of the game or something but I did them really early. It took a great deal even with me playing on very easy to beat them. After I did though, I gained a new suit of power armor that ended up being way better than basically anything else I would get throughout the whole game. So this thing carried me for sure. Not only that, but doing these side missions gained me a lot of experience points and also counted as miscellaneous objectives, which I, which I need to complete 50 of later on. With all that done though, I took care of a ghoul problem for another settlement, which helped me reach level 25. Unstoppable Wanderer. I found my 20th magazine. I'm not sure how many are actually in the game, but it is definitely way, way more than 20. Reading these gives a nice little permanent buff as well, so they're always worth grabbing if you can find them. Prince Not Dead. Heading back out into the wasteland, I joined the railroad. Joining these guys actually took 
a little bit of work and a little bit of searching online as well. Since they were really well hidden, I just couldn't figure this out. But basically, you need to follow a trail that takes quite a while to be fair and then it leads to a church. Once that's done, you head down into the basement of the church and you have to input this code into the wall. I honestly had no idea what this code was supposed to be. Turns out you're supposed to spell out railroad. That gains you access to their secret hideout. That's not enough to join them though. I then had to complete a mission for them. Tradecraft. After doing some more exploring of the wastelands, I discovered my 100th location. This sounds like a lot, and to be honest, it is quite a lot, but there's so many locations in the game. I think by the end, or near towards the end of the game, when I looked at my stats, I had almost 200. So, yeah, there's way more than 100, and you probably will just naturally get this as you play. Ooh, Ranger Corpse. Killed my 300 of human. Next, I met with a guy called Virgil, who told me to go and hunt down a Corsa. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but basically, they have a chip that I needed to get. So during the memory section from earlier, I saw the Institute member when he took Sean, they basically just teleported out of there. And Virgil tells me that that is the only way in and out of the Institute. So because of that, I needed one of these chips. So I went and killed the guy and took it. So slams him on his head. I'll take that chip, thank you very much. Oh, trophy as well. Hunter, hunted. This next one, I got for building 100 workshop items called Fixer Upper. This basically means anytime you build something in the settlements, that all counts as one thing. So another one that you'll probably quite easily get. Unfortunately, this was another trophy that I missed, but thankfully, this was the last one that I missed. After that, I tried to join the Brotherhood and it wasn't working hey, out. Check your fire, we've got hostiles. Oh my god, I can Stop finally right there, talk to this guy. Nope. It's a miracle. I've probably come back to this guy, no joke, probably about 30 times. And every time, he just says, like, keep your gun up or whatever because there's enemies around. And I spent about an hour looking around this area for enemies and I couldn't find anyone. And he just refused to talk to me. Now, all of a sudden, he's willing to speak to me. So I might actually now be able to join the Brotherhood. <laughs> a few questions first. Check your fire. We've got hostiles. Yeah. Excuse me. You're joking, are you? We've got hostiles. You're joking. He finally speaks to me, and then mid convo, he decides he wants to just say this. Oh my, this quest is so glitchy, bro. This game in general is so glitchy. All right, so gonna make a save here. So what I did is I reloaded an older save before I spoke to him. Uh, when he glitched out again, so now I should be able to speak to him again. I had a look online, apparently, even if you get past the first glitch of him not speaking to you, it can glitch a second time when you actually start speaking to him if you don't say very Excuse specific right things. There, no so, yeah, I have to say very point. certain things at this point for him to not bug, so back, back off. off. So then I say, forget, forget it. it. So you do that. I don't get you. Speak to... Are you playing the hero or the victim? Uh, and there I go speak to him again. Dance. Joining up. So I'm from Vault. Vault. I'm a load of steel right, so now if I press yes, it should actually the advance the story. Moving. And actually allow me to join. Oh, oh my god, look at that. Fire support completed. It's a bloody miracle. I've finally completed this mission. Oh my god. Now, do you remember my companion dog meat? Well, I sent him to Sanctuary and had Piper follow me around for a while because I knew there was a trophy that I needed for reaching the maximum relationship level with a companion. And I'm not sure you can do that with dog meat. Maybe you can, but I don't know. Either way though, I took Piper along with me for a little while. Each character kind of likes and dislikes certain things. Piper, for example, she liked it when I would help people and also when I lockpicked things. And I did a lot of lockpicking, so it was a, it was a match made in heaven, I guess. There we go, having reached the highest level of affinity with Piper, you have gained the gift of Gab. And there's my trophy, lovable. So now I've finally joined the bloody brotherhood. 
and as mentioned this was so freaking annoying with how glitchy it was but after being able to talk to him I had to complete my initiation which also ended up glitching out so I went to this location with the uh, dance and he decided for whatever reason to just leave the moment we arrived I don't know what he was doing either way this confused the crap out of me and I was just like what do I do now first it glitched and now it's glitched again like what is happening so after maybe like half an hour of searching online I found out that the best way to fix it was to just basically completely ignore the quest marker telling you to follow him and just continue on with the mission without him um, this whole brotherhood thing was just a massive headache to be honest oh my days there we go it's a miracle we have joined the Brotherhood of Steel. <laughs> With all that behind me though, it was now time to get my ass into the Institute. With the chip in hand and some materials, I built the device that would teleport me there. After arriving, I met with a leader called Father Plot Twist. He's your son. Sean. So now that we basically finished our main goal of finding him, it was time to start deciding on which faction we would side with. So while inside the Institute, I uploaded a device on the computer which was for the railroad. I'm going to be slowly working on all of the factions until I basically get a mission that pisses off one of the other factions. Shortly after that, I managed to finish my 10th side quest. So now I was at a point in the game where if I started doing main story missions for the different factions, it would piss off the other faction and lock me out of doing the other endings. So long story short, basically I just saved the game a couple of times in different save slots and then when I did one of the endings for a faction, I wouldn't have to play through the whole game. I could just reload that save and choose a different one because we'll need the endings for the different ones, like for the Brotherhood, for Railroad, and for Institute. You don't actually need the ending for the Minutemen. For now though, I continued the Institute story quest line, I met up with Father in the Wasteland, and then we went back to the Institute and had a meeting with him and the other members. It turns out he's dying, and he wants me to take the lead. So me, being the father of the year, I was asked to do a voiceover to broadcast out to the wasteland to basically just tell everyone that the institute isn't this big bad horrible thing that they've been hearing about that it's actually good and they just want to help so i got that message out there powering up and then i continued to do some more things for the railroad underground undercover which involved destroying the brotherhood to do that I needed to steal one of the choppers. Once I'd got it, I flew up to the giant base flying in the sky, fought my way through what felt like hundreds of Brotherhood of Steel members and planted three bombs. I then needed to get the hell out of there because this thing was about to blow up. Finishing the railroad quest line. Thank you for keeping them. So now with the Brotherhood out of the picture, I went back to the Institute and finished their final mission and decided the fate of the Commonwealth. I think I'd like to sleep now. With that one done, I could reload the save I was talking about before I basically blew everyone in the Brotherhood up. So now with those two endings out of the way and in the bag, I'd started to focus on the Brotherhood of Steel's ending. During this quest, the Brotherhood leader found out that my buddy Dance was actually a synth from the Institute, so I was tasked with finding him and eliminating him. I didn't want to eliminate him though, so I convinced Maxon, the leader, to allow him to live. But the caveat was he's, of course, not a member of the Brotherhood anymore, and he never wants to see him around anywhere. And if he sees him, he'll kill him himself. Right, now, back to the Brotherhood. Thankfully, Max was still okay with me. 
but this whole time I've been working on a giant robot. This thing took a long time to build and it required quite a few things and a lot of different missions but once we'd had it built this thing would be what we used to destroy the institute. With it powered up I followed it as it absolutely obliterated everything in its path. This thing is super overpowered. Wish I could just like have this as a companion. Unfortunately though you'd just get it for this, this one mission and that's it. Either way we arrived we took out the synths and entered. Once inside, just like I did against the Brotherhood, I killed freaking everybody in there, found Father on his deathbed and convinced him that if he helped me, less people would die. He agreed, which made getting down to the reactor a little bit easier, but once I was down there, I planted the charge, left and watched it blow up, ending the Brotherhood story. So with all the endings done, I went back to Sanctuary and spoke with Codsworth, my trusted companion from way before the bombs even fell, and it turns out he was my fifth companion. So now of course it was a bit more of a, a clean up. So the next thing I did was I fast travelled to Diamond City because I needed to run around the market touching each of the four corners. Then played a hollow tape game on my Pip Boy. Future Retro. Quickly checked out my settlers in Fallout Shelter, making sure none of them had died. I think we were all good. I then jumped back on Fallout 4 to create my 50th weapon mod. Hey, armed and dangerous. Broke some guy out of jail and then hacked my 50th terminal. Moving on, I was heading up Trinity Tower, taking out everyone that moves. While on a mission, I lockpicked this gate, letting these two out, and inside was a bobblehead. This was my 10th bobblehead, which means I have half of them, so I'll still need another 10, bringing my total up to 20 for another trophy. Yes. I continued exploring and found another enclave camp, and as I mentioned before, it's where I got my amazing power armor, and the other great thing that I kind of touched on each time you complete one of these camps you get three points in your miscellaneous missions you gotta do 50 of these but each of these camps counts as three and i think there were three or four of these camps meaning i got quite a lot of my miscellaneous missions just from this but completing this camp led me right into completing my 50th miscellaneous objective you can also easily get one every single time you defend a friendly camp as well I then found myself needing only one more bobblehead. So I looked online and found its location. Turns out it was hidden away inside Vault 81. So I got my butt over there, managed to get inside, saved a cat for some kid, and found out about the secret Vault 81, which held a cure. Once at the bottom, I found my final bobblehead. I'll open the door for you. Thank you. Oh. There's my final bobblehead as well inside there. Medicine bobblehead. There we go. They're action figures. I handed the cure to the doctor, healed the kid, got some nice experience as a reward, which left me with the tiniest amount of experience needed to reach level 50. So I headed back outside and moments later, ding. Honestly, I've heard this is quite a grind, but for me personally, I played the game with no experience exploits needed. Hell, I still probably had way over 50 quests still to do, so it didn't really feel like a grind at all. With this next trophy, I had to kill five giant creatures. Um, I felt like I'd killed way more than five giant enemies, but it turns out only like certain ones actually count. So I just had a look online at locations of these things and uh, yeah, got to work. All right, so this could be the final behemoth that I need to kill or giant creature or whatever. I think if I steal this 
doll, it'll spawn a behemoth from somewhere. Yep, there he is. I must have stole his, uh, his teddy or something. Let's take him out. Hit with a critical. There we go, he's down. Alright, no trophy, so I must need one more. Alright, so this should definitely be the last one I need here in Swan's Pond. This should be uh, my fifth and final behemoth that I need to take out. I'm guessing it would be in this... Oh, there it is. I should have no issues with this guy. Let's get some shots off on Vats. Next one or two shots might kill him. How am I missing him? He's so big. There it is, the harder they fall. So that leaves me with only two more trophies. The first one was for reaching maximum happiness, that's 100% in a large settlement. This was the only trophy in the whole game that I actually needed to go out of my way to actually achieve. I originally tried to earn this one at the first camp, Sanctuary, but I couldn't seem to get it past like 94%. So I had a look online and found out that the easiest place to do it was actually at the Red Rocket. So I got my ass over there, I built some defenses to keep the noobs safe, I planted some crops so they could eat, and placed some wells so they didn't die of thirst. Put down a bunch of beds as well, and then built a radio recruit tower to attract more settlers. With all that done, I needed a hell of a lot of caps so I could buy some clinics. This raised the happiness, but you also needed to assign a person to them. Then, it was just the waiting game. I started on a few of the DLC trophies while I waited, and after what felt like an eternity, it finally popped. You a mole rat? Oh! Oh my god, Benevolent Leader finally popped! This is, can just be like a little bonus section if I include it in the DLC video, but reach maximum happiness in a large settlement. Finally got this, which means I need only one more trophy for the Platinum. But yeah, I've had this happiness meter so close to 100% many times and then it just goes back down. So finally, the red rocket truck stop is 100%. Right, so we've just had a telling off from Preston. Funnily enough, Preston is the guy we're going to use to get the final trophy. We all know Preston, go save this camp. This camp's in trouble. Go help the settlement, blah, blah, blah. I send you on so many goddamn missions. So now it's time for me to get some revenge. So we're going to go over to poor old Preston, pickpocket, and we're going to place a grenade and uh, pop this platinum. Oh, there it is. Pranksters return. Beautiful stuff. And the Platinum Trophy finally collected all other 50 trophies. I've played at this point about 65 hours, but that's also including doing quite a lot of the DLC trophies as well. Yeah, that's another Platinum in the bag for me, champs. Thank you all so very much for watching. I've been Mr. Leaning. This has been Fallout Force Platinum. Take care, and I'll catch you all on the next video. The road ahead will be hard. This time, I'm ready. Because I know war. War never changes.